Hi, Bill Kasky here. My story starts in my 20s where I got out of college and really didn't have any kind of direction and got a job in sales and then got another job in sales and got another job in sales. I kind of bounced around like a, like a pinball. But I never got any coaching or training. I got a lot of product training. I worked for a Caterpillar dealer and the, the product training was awesome, but I didn't get any psychological training about how sales works or anything. And I really struggled and I ended up having one of those late night conversations that we've probably all had a conversation with ourselves, which is where I ask myself, is this really what I want to do? Is this profession really right for me? Am I cut out for it? Am I up to it? Am I good enough for it? Because it wasn't going very well. And that was the night that I decided, unbeknownst to me, I decided to go on a learning binge and really become a voracious consumer of sales content, achievement content, and I was, I was reaching out, I was desperate because I didn't want to go back to school. I wasn't ever a good student, so going back to MBA school really wasn't an option. I had no family business to fall back on. So I started reading and listening and, and consuming and Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy and you know Dartmouth training and all those training programs back in the 80s and 90s. And I realized something pretty quickly that it really wasn't right for me. Everything was kind of a rehashed version of what somebody else had done. It was just, just kind of continued to be recycled and rehashed. And there were three lessons that I learned from my cons uh, consumption of that content. Number one, it seemed like it was all trying to turn you into a clown and turn you into some kind of convincer and persuader and always be closing and that kind of crap that just doesn't work and it didn't work for me and it, it was kind of off-putting. The second thing is, it always had at the foundation, what do I need to say or do to close business? What do I need to say or do to sell something? And I felt like, well, that's kind of uh, myopic, isn't it? Isn't it the prospect who we're supposed to be uh, finding problems and, and helping them solve? Why is it always about me trying to say something? It just put an undue burden on salespeople. And the third thing I found was that training was boring. Most training was not empowering. It was it was all about how the company was going to make more money. If you've been in sales training in your company before, when's the last time a coach called you up and said, hey, I want this to be special for you. What do you want to get out of this? What are you trying to accomplish in your life? What is your vision for your future? Never. It's always about corporate money and revenue. And I felt like it took the very thing that we all care about, which is our own well-being and our own future and our own goals and dreams and visions, and discounted them. And so I started building a methodology that I thought and I felt and I believe today is useful because it puts you at the center of your life and it puts you at the center of your potential. I think we're all born with all of these assets. Some are God-given, some are accumulated over the years, our wisdom, our expertise, our stories, our, our clients, and none of that was being used. And it was all a game and I didn't like the game. And so I have created something that I think is a methodology that I believe will really help you. The first step in the method is the mindset. How do you think? Not just positive mental attitude, but how do you think about yourself, about the world you inhabit, about your time on the planet, about what's potential for you? How do you feel about and believe, what do you believe about your limitations and your capabilities? And mindset is just so important and most trainers just pass over that or they speak about it kind of in surfacey level conversations. The second element is the map. I believe that we all need a map. We all have to have goals and dreams and visions, what we want our outcomes to be, and then we need to have milestones and a project plan to help us accomplish this. Number three is message. You've got to be crystal clear on your message, especially today. Messages come at people, you know, a thousand or ten thousand a day. Clutter is everywhere. So when you show up and you sound like everybody else, you sound like the last seven salespeople that were in there selling your type of solution, your message is not going to break through. The next area is your methods. And primarily here is the selling method. What selling method are you using that helps the customer down the path, down the journey? You're the guide on this journey. And if, if it's all about you closing a sale, you don't think the customer feels that? Of course they do. And the fifth and final area is marketing and branding. I think it's important that you, with all these assets that you have, your wisdom, your, your expertise, your know-how, you need to build your personal brand, not in lieu of the company brand, but in addition to it. 
and you need to have a marketing, a personal marketing plan that helps you get in front of those people to begin discussions, that helps the phone ring for inbound, and also a, a, a notion of outbound as well. But those are the five elements that I have found people love. It has, it has resulted in quite a bit of expansion of people's income, companies, businesses. Uh, if you're interested in talking to me about your team or about yourself, there's all sorts of ways you can do that. You can go to BillKasky.com. But I thought you might like to hear my story because it, it started off very poorly, but it ends with me being able to speak to people like you and all over the world and helping them change the game of selling. It's a new game. And if you're playing the same game with the old rules, you'll get chewed up and spit out, and I don't want that for you. See you.